Let us pray. Father, today we pause to remember and reflect on the sacrifice made by those who paid the ultimate price on behalf of our nation. Remembering these four chaplains and others like them that did so in unwavering faith in you. We pray that their sacrifices are never forgotten and that we may always remember the life lessons they leave us. Let us turn to you, Lord, in our remembrance of the fallen. Guide us towards a harmonious existence as we honor those who were willing to give up their lives that others may live and do so in freedom. We pray for peace, Lord. Lead us towards a world where war, hunger, pain, and suffering are no more. May we be receptive to your guidance, and may we never forget the fallen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. The Lord be with you. Welcome, everyone, to our worship service this morning. This is the fifth Sunday after Epiphany, but what we're also doing today is that we are honoring the four chaplains, and I will not, um, I won't go into that now. You will understand later who these folks were and the people that were with them. We'll also remember all those who gave their lives for others. We want to welcome and are honored to have with us the color guard from Boulder Junction as well today. Um, in this remembrance of the chaplains as well. Um, as usual, I had announcements all listed out in my office and I forgot them there. So I'm just gonna kind of uh, just recap what we're doing. I believe it's on page 20 in your worship guide. We are approaching Lent. We, I'd like you to keep in mind Ash Wednesday is the 2nd of March. Each midweek Lenten service is, is Lent laid out there leading up to Palm Sunday. It includes a soup supper. And for all those, I, you just got to take my word for it, the folks around here make really good soup. So, you know, it, it's a very nice way to start a worship service where we gather for fellowship, we share a meal, and then we move into the chapel area uh, for our midweek Lenten services. Uh, you also have in front of you the uh, dates and times now for our chili dinner, our, our soup dinner, for in honor of the Vilas County Humane Society, which will be on Saturday the 19th. You want to look at that as well. That's all the announcements that I have for this morning. I would just like to say that if you are visiting with us today, everything that you need for the worship service, you were given when you came in the narthex this morning uh, from start to finish. Also, whenever we gather at Shepherd, we commune. And we'd like you to know that should it be your choice to do so, you are welcome to the Lord's table here. You simply come forward as the ushers direct. You will receive the host from me. And then depending on which side of the church you're on, you will be offered the wine to my right or to my left. The wine is offered in the chalice, which is two chambered. A small chamber is grape juice. And you will also have the option of communing with the wine in individual glass. And should you do that, you will find a waste bin set up for you on each side as well to put your empty glass. And then simply proceed back on the side aisles to where you are seated. But again, the emphasis is this morning that all are welcome to the Lord's table. On that note, let us prepare our hearts and minds and begin our worship service this day. I invite you to remain seated and please join me in the call to worship and confession and forgiveness. The one who calls you together this day yearns for each of you and for all people to hear and be blessed. Blessed is the one who comes bringing trustworthy words for the healing of the world. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who stretches out the heavens, who sends light to the nations, who gives breath to us all. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Mighty and loving God, 
we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We seek our own way. We divide the body of Christ. In your mercy, cleanse us and heal us. Let the words of our mouths and the thoughts of our hearts and everything that we do be filled with faith, hope, and love. Amen. Hear the voice of our Lord Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to proclaim release to the captives. In the name of Jesus Christ, I proclaim to you that your sins are forgiven and you are released. The joy of the Lord is your strength and the gifts of the Holy Spirit are yours forever. Amen. Our gathering hymn today is This Is My Song, ELW 887, and I invite you to stand as you are comfortable. God spoke through the prophet, Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. When you pass through the waters, when you pass through the rivers, when you walk through the fire, God is our Savior. We are precious in God's sight. Come, let us worship our Savior who leads us into life. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the greatest of all examples of love that Christ demonstrated towards us. In that while we were still sinners, he died for us and has called us to be members of his church and to love others as he has loved us. May we love others in his strength and power. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Through a vision in the temple, the 8th century prophet Isaiah is called by God to announce judgment against Israel. Aware of his sinfulness and shortcomings, Isaiah is initially hesitant, but when God calls, Isaiah responds, Here am I, send me. First reading is from Isaiah chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched you, your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. Our psalm today is Psalm 138, and please read it responsively. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple. Praise your name because of your steadfast love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. In our second reading today, Paul delivers in a nutshell the story of the gospel that was given to him. In the lineage of the Christian faith, we have received the good news of God's love from generations of believers before us, and we continue to tell this story to the world. From 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which, in turn, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I have proclaimed to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, 
Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is within me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. And now if you would please stand for the gospel, alleluia. Gospel according to John, the 15th chapter. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. February 2nd, 1943, the USAT George Dorchester was crowded to capacity, carrying 902 U.S. troops, merchant seamen, and civilian workers. Once a luxury liner, the 5,649-ton vessel had been converted into an Army transport ship. Dorchester, one of the three ships in the SG-19 convoy, was moving steadily across the icy waters from Newfoundland towards a U.S. base in Greenland. Coast Guard cutters Tampa, Escanaba, and Comanche escorted the convoy. Hans Danielson, the ship's captain, was concerned and cautious. Earlier, Tampa had detected a submarine with its sonar. Danielson knew he was in dangerous waters even before he got the report. German U-boats were constantly prowling these vital sea lanes, and several ships had already been sunk. Dorchester was now only 150 miles from its destination, but the captain ordered the men to sleep in their clothing and keep life jackets on. Many soldiers sleeping deep in the ship's hold disregarded the order because of the engine's heat. Others ignored it because life jackets were uncomfortable. On February 3rd at 12.55 a.m., a periscope broke the chilly Arctic waters. Through the crosshairs, an officer aboard the U-223 spotted Dorchester. After identifying and targeting the ship, he gave orders to fire a fan of three torpedoes. The one that hit was decisive and deadly, striking the starboard side amidship far below the waterline. Alerted that the Dorchester was sinking rapidly, Danielson gave the order to abandon ship. In fewer than 20 minutes, Dorchester would slip beneath the Arctic icy water. Tragically, the hit had knocked out power and radio contact with the three escort ships. Tampa, however, saw the flash of the explosion. It responded and rescued 97 survivors. Escanaba circled Dorchester, rescuing an additional 133 survivors, 
one unfortunately that did die later. Comanche continued on, escorting the remaining two ships. Aboard Dorchester, panic and chaos had set in. The blast had killed scores of men, and many more were seriously wounded. Others, stunned by the explosion, were groping in the darkness. Those sleeping without clothing rushed topside, where they were confronted first by a blast of icy Arctic air, and then the knowledge that death awaited. Men jumped from the ship into the lifeboats, overcrowding them to the point of capsizing, according to eyewitnesses. Other rafts tossed into the Atlantic drifted away before soldiers could get in them. In the midst of the pan pandemonium, according to those present, four army chaplains brought hope in despair and light in darkness. Lieutenant George L. Fox, a Methodist minister. Lieutenant Alexander D. Goody, a Jewish rabbi. Lieutenant George P. Washington, a Roman Catholic priest. And Lieutenant Clark V. Poling, a Dutch Reformed minister. Quietly and quickly, the four chaplains spread out among the soldiers. They tried to calm the frightened, tend the wounded, and guide the disoriented toward safety. Witnesses of that terrible night remember hearing the four men offer prayers for, die, for the dying and encouragement for those who would live, said Wyatt Fox, son of Reverend Fox. One witness, Private William Bednar, found himself floating in an oil-smeared water surrounded by dead bodies and debris. He could hear men crying, pleading, praying. Bednar recalls, I could also hear the chaplains preaching courage. Their voices were the only thing that kept me going. A sailor, Petty Officer John Mahoney, tried to re-enter his cabin but was stopped by Rabbi Goody. Concerned about the Arctic air, Mahoney explained, He'd forgotten his gloves. Never mind, Goody responded. I have two pair. The rabbi then gave the petty officer his own gloves. Later, Mahoney realized that Goody hadn't been carrying two pairs of gloves and that the chaplain had decided not to leave the Dorchester. By this time, most of the men were topside, and the chaplains opened a storage locker and began distributing life jackets. It was then that engineer Grady Clark witnessed an outstanding sight. When there were no more life jackets to hand out, the chaplains removed theirs and gave them to four frightened young men. Rabbi Goody did not call out for a Jew, and Father Washington did not call out for a Catholic, nor did Reverend Fox or Reverend Poling call out for a Protestant. They simply gave their life jackets to those next in line. It was the finest thing I had ever seen or hoped to see the sight of heaven, said John Ladd another survivor who saw the chaplain's selfless act. As the ship went down, survivors in nearby rafts could see the four chaplains braced against the slanting deck arm in arm. They were heard praying and singing hymns. Of the 902 men aboard Dorchester, 672 died that day. When the news reached the United States, the nation was stunned by the magnitude of the tragedy and the heroic conduct of the four chaplains. Valor is a gift, Carl Sandburg once said. Those having it never know for sure whether they have it until the test comes. That night, Reverend Fox, Rabbi Goody, 
Reverend Poling and Father Washington passed life's ultimate test. In doing so, they became an enduring example of extraordinary faith, courage, and selflessness. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from his Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. I have to practice that all week just to be able to get it done the way I did. I'm sure, if I did my math correct, it is the 79th anniversary. If I remember, 79th, 78th, it will be. And I'm sure there's been many words that have been said here today. It has been something that people have gathered to remember for all of those years. These life jackets stand as a reminder and in honor of the four chaplains that helped as many as they could in the final moments of their life. When I thought about this, I thought about a phrase again out of a wonderful novel that I've read more, many times, and it was The Lord of the Rings. And the two characters in this particular scene, one was just completely depressed that such hard and difficult times had been bestowed on him. He couldn't figure out why it had come to him, and he was just frustrated that it did. The other actor turned to him and said, so do all that live to see such times. But that is not anymore for us to worry about. What we need to be focused on, what we have some say in, is what we do with the time we have. Now in the case of these four men, dying along with many others, and like many other men and women over the course of the history of this country that gave their life in similar ways, they did what they could with the time that they had. They didn't think about others and yet did what God called them to do, to put others first, to comfort, to prepare, literally to prepare for that moment in life when they would meet their Lord and Savior. Our Lord Jesus in many ways did exactly the same thing. Jesus came knowing he came for one reason and one purpose, and that was to die. And he also knew when that would be. He died for you. He died for me. He died once for all, a painful, agonizing death. But he also came for something else, and that was to rise. And that's today is why we gather his sacrifice will always be remembered, but the fact that he overcame death and the devil and rose is why we are here. And it's that type of faith that in Christ and or in God himself, as in Rabbi Goody's uh, case, is how they served until the very last and how they died. Now the one thing about being born and living is that at some point in time, we all will face the same fate. We may do it in the comfort of our own homes. We may do it somewhere else. We may do it young. We may die when we're old or something in between. From illness, from accident, we don't know. And we know that each day, although sometimes we take it for granted, is truly a gift. So the question is, is whether it's a good day or a bad day, a good time in our lives, a one, a struggle, it's ours. And it's not so much how much we resent having to work through it, but what we do with the time we have left. That when we walk through those doors, the lives that we touch and the lives that we affect, we may only get a chance to do it once, like the survivors that did make it home to tell this story. What they did was follow their faith. They call it valor, it was. But in this particular story, I believe faith won the day. 
Faith came first. And it's what we're called to take in the opening prayer, what we call life lessons, that there are human lessons in and after our Lord Jesus that we can take to heart and that we can take with us each and every day. And that is, is that when the opportunity arises, when the need arises, when the circumstances dictate that we act in the name of Christ, that we do so boldly, without fear, to use that time to the best of our ability for the sake of the gospel and for the sake of our Lord Jesus. There were many that died that day. We pray for all of them. There were many that died in the war before it that was supposed to end all wars. And unfortunately, we continue to not be able to learn a lesson. And unfortunately, I'm sure humanity's got a few more of them stacked up to go. I pray not. But today, we can't control that. But what we can control is what we do with the day. Who we love, who we cherish, and who we take care of. They did what they could for who they could. And as you'll hear later, went out singing. I pray each day that as we go forth, that we remember and live in the sacrifice of Christ. And that there are those that lived in it as well and died in it to that promise of eternal life that we all share. Take that message, take that lesson, live each day with it, with your Lord in your heart, remembering those that had him there as well. Amen. Our hymn of the day. Eternal Father, strong to serve, ELW 756, and I invite you to stand as you are comfortable.
and scholar. Following his father's footsteps, this young man, known for his laughter and love of life, became a rabbi. Even as he pursued his studies, he found time to serve in the National Guard. The return of the body of the unknown soldier to Arlington Cemetery had a profound effect on Goody. He attended the ceremonies, choosing to walk the 15 miles there and back rather than take a car or a bus because he thought it showed more respect. Goody married his childhood sweetheart, and they had a daughter. He was serving a synagogue in York, Pennsylvania when World War II broke out. One day, Mrs. Goody received a telegram from her husband that read, having a wonderful experience, and she knew that her husband had found companions with whom he could share his faith and good humor. We light this next candle in memory of Chaplain Clark V. Poling. Clark Poling was the youngest of the four chaplains and the seventh generation in an unbroken line of ministers in the Dutch Reformed Church. When World War II broke out, he was anxious to go, but not as a chaplain. I'm, going, I'm not going to hide behind the church in some safe office out of the firing line, he told his father. The elder Poling replied, don't you know the chaplains have the highest mortality rate of all? As a chaplain, you'll have the best chance in the world to be killed. You just can't carry a gun to kill anyone yourself. So the young man left his pastorate in Shekmatati, New York, and became an army chaplain. Just before he sailed, Poling asked his father to pray for him. Not for my safe return. That wouldn't be fair. Just pray that I shall do my duty and have the strength, courage, and understanding of men. Just pray that I shall be adequate. Indeed, he taught his men not to harbor personal hatred for the Germans and the Japanese. Hate the system that made your brother evil, he said. It is the system we must destroy. And finally, we light this candle for Chaplain John P. Washington. John Washington grew up in the toughest section of Newark, New Jersey, poor, scrappy, and determined. One of nine children born to an Irish immigrant family, he was blessed with a sunny disposition and a love for music. He also loved a good fight and was a member of the South 12th Street Gang when he was called to the priesthood. He played ball with the boys of the parish, organized sports teams, and when the war broke out, went with his boys into the army raised in song and prayer to comfort those around him, Washington's beautiful voice could be heard above the cries of the dying in the final moments on February 3rd, 1943. We will continue with the prayers of the church. Thank you. Let us pray for the church, for the world and for all in need. Each petition will end with, Lord, in your mercy, please respond with, hear our prayer. You call us to follow you, Lord, so guide us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide all of your people to make wise choices and protect the land, the sea, and all life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Be present where there is loneliness. Be comfort where there is pain. Be healing where there is brokenness. Now we especially lift up names dear to us, whether aloud or silently. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We are grateful 
we honor the service and the valor of the four chaplains of the SS Dorchester, as well as all who serve the common good, our military, our police officers, our firefighters, our paramedics, and our health care providers. Keep them in your care, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for this, our native land. Guide our leaders and give them true wisdom, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Unite us together through our faith, love, and trust in our Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your steadfast love. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to share the peace with your neighbor from where you are seated, after which you may be seated. You've got to turn around and wave to the crowd, folks. Lord's peace to you. Lord's peace. Lord's peace. Lord's peace. Lord's peace. Lord's peace. Let's see. Lord's peace. Lord's peace, everyone. Lord's peace, Mike. Lord, Lord's peace. <laughs> Lord's peace. Peace, everyone. Don, Lord's peace. You may be seated. As the Lord's table is prepared today, I invite you to join in. Christ be our light.
invite you to stand as you are comfortable, and please join me in the prayer found on the top of page 15. God of mercy and grace, the eyes of all wait upon you, and you open your hand in blessing. Fill us with good things to your table, that you may come to the help of all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. declares your praise beyond the stars, beneath the sea, within each cell, with every breath. Generations bless your faithfulness through the water, by night and day, across the wilderness, out of exile, into the future. We give you thanks for your dear Son at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer, beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his love for us on the way, at the table, and to the end, we proclaim the mystery of faith. We pray for the gift of your spirit in our gathering within this meal among your people throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Christ Jesus, by your spirit in your church, without end. Amen. Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed.
God's gift to his creation. This gift is for you. All has been made ready. All are welcome. Our Lord and Savior invites us to come. Please be seated. Sin of the world have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world have mercy on us. Let's start over this side. I don't know how many of the colored are.
I invite you to stand as you are comfortable. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the final blessing, just an invitation again to all. We meet for coffee and a more fellowship after the worship service, and if you are comfortable with that and you have the time, you are most welcome to join us. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the nation peace and concord, to all your servants the promise of everlasting life, life to guide us on our way, courage to support us, and your blessing to unite us in service to this our country and to you, O oh God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our sending song for the day is O Beautiful for Spacious Skies. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Very quickly, thank you, thank for, you. for coming. Thank you for asking.